أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم Let us move on to our next murakkab and before we go into the woods with this big chart I am going to bring our boy back and I am going to focus mainly on this kalima which is haza to start with we started off with um, a phrase we said a good boy and translated as waladun hasanan waladun hasanan now we want to say this boy this boy how do we say this boy in arabic uh, let's um, analyze this phrase in english first this this is uh, well this is a demonstrative pronoun and uh, a noun to point to someone or something etc and boy is what is being pointed at so we have demonstrative pronoun and a noun at which we are pointing so that's uh, our uh, english phrase this boy what about arabic terminology so in arabic demonstrative pronoun is called ismul isharati ismul isharati and if you look at this construction it is murakkab idafi we got mudaf and we got mudaf ila here so ismul isharati ishara mean sign or pointing and basically means noun of pointing and boy here is musharun ila musharun ila So we have this combination of ismul ishara and musharun ila and they combine to make murakkab ishari So this is our next phrase English translation we can say demonstrative phrase So we have got our demonstrative phrase here. So we have ismu ishara and we have musharun ila. So this is a demonstrative pronoun and uh, we are pointing to this noun which is musharun ila. And we have come up with the demonstrative phrase. let us translate this we have our vocabulary we know boy in arabic is waladun waladun and this we know it's haza we are quite familiar with that as well haza and putting this together let's put this together haza waladun no the point here is whether this is correct as far as 
Murakkab Ishari is concerned. Let us look at it. We know that um, for correct use of a noun in a sentence, we will have to be familiar with four characteristics of a noun. And those four characteristics are definiteness, uh, irab, jins, and others. So if we analyze these two nouns from those four characteristics points of view so we have haza we know all pronouns are definite so haza is definite Arab haza is mabni we know that from previous discussion mabni mabni means it does have three Arabic states, but it doesn't change its appearance. So it is a haza, haza, haza. So in rafa, nasab, and jar, it remains a haza. Haza, in rafa, haza, in nasab, haza, in jar. So it's mabni. It is muzakkar um, from the gender point of view, muzakkar, masculine, and it is wahid, singular. Let us look at Waladun. It is indefinite. Tanween tells us that it's indefinite. Tanween also tells us that it is Murfu. It is in Rafa. It is Muzakkar. Boy. And it's singular. It's Wahid. So that's our analysis of these two nouns as far as the four characteristics of a noun are concerned. Now if we say haza waladun, put this together, so haza being definite and at the beginning of a sentence it fulfills the requirements to become muptada. So it can take the slot of Muqtada. Waladun is indefinite and we know Khabar is usually indefinite and because of this being indefinite it can take the slot of Khabar. So Muqtada and Khabar will combine to make Jumla Ismiya Khabariya and our translation will be this is a boy. So this is not really this boy. This is a boy. Information is complete. It is a sentence. When we say this boy, information is not complete. Our listeners are still wondering what about this boy. So the information remains incomplete in Murakkab Ishari. So how we then, how do we construct Murakkab Ishari from here? So we have got our vocabulary all we have to do is to put al on this noun so we'll have to make this al waladu al waladu when al comes the mean goes we know that and then we prefix this with haza haza and because this is hamzatul wasl it will not be pronounced, it will become hazal waladu, it will remain there in writing, but it is not going to be pronounced. So our construction is hazal waladu, this boy, and this is our murakkab ishari, this boy. That's our murakkab ishari. This important point here that musharun ila. This is our ism ishara, and that's Musharun Alay. And Musharun Alay must have Al on it. If a noun does not have Al on it, it cannot be Musharun Alay. So, this is one import, important requirement for Musharun Alay is that it must have Al on it. 
and when waladun will have al on it in the form of al waladu our construction will be hazal waladu so remember i am saying that musharan alay must have al on it i did not say musharan alay must be definite of course this is definite because of being al but there could be some other definite nouns for example if we say rather than saying hazal waladu if we say haza hamidun haza hamidun so hamid being a proper noun uh, isme alam is definite but this does not make this musharan ala musharan ala must have al on it this will remain jumla ismiya haza hamidun this is hamid Hamid is definite here, and in this construction, Hamid is khabar, and this is mubtada. We know khabar is usually indefinite, but khabar could be definite as well. And there are circumstances when it becomes difficult to bring the khabar as indefinite. For example, in Surah Yusuf, we are familiar with that ayah: "Ana Yusufu wa haza akhi." Ana Yusufu. I am Yusuf. So that's Muptada. And this is Khabar. So Yusuf is definite here, and the Khabar is definite because we cannot really make Yusuf indefinite. Yusuf is Isma Alam. And even the next part of the ayah, Wahaza Akhi. Haza. Akhi. Haza is um, our Muqtada here and Akh is Mudaf and Ya pronoun is Mudafila because Ya pronoun is definite all pronouns are definite so Akh here Akhun here is definite so basically our khabar in the form of murakkab idafi is definite here so khabar is definite here and khabar is also definite here in this sentence so khabar is usually indefinite but it could be definite when it becomes very difficult to make it indefinite um Let's go back on Hazal Waladu. Which is our phrase. Hazal Waladu. This boy. Murakkab Ishari. Now, let us look back at four characteristics of a noun. And those are definiteness, arab, jinns, and other. So we can make a statement here, and this statement is true, that isma ishara and musharan alay must match in four aspects of a noun. Which means, if isma ishara is singular, musharan alay must be singular. If isma ishara is definite, that should be definite. But this should be definite by al, not by any other means. That's the only exception. And then if isam ishara is wahid, this must be wahid. If isam ishara is oneness, this must be oneness. And if this is in rafa, musharan alay must be in rafa, and then nasab and jar, and so on. So it is like murakkab tawsifi, where Sifa follows Mosuf in all the four characteristics. Here, Ishara and Mashar and Alaya must tally in all these four aspects. So how do we know the Arab of Haza? Because Haza, the appearance Haza remains uh, the same, whether it's Rafa, Nasab, or Jar. So to make out the Arab of Haza, or Isam Ishara, we will have to look at Mashar and Alaya. If Musharan Alay is 
definite, uh, sorry, in Rafa, then Isam Ishara will be considered to be in Rafa, and we will call, we will say, Fi Mahalli Rafin. Fi Mahalli Rafin. In the Mahal of Rafa, in the place of Rafa. Similarly, if it could be Hazal Waladu, depending on its place in a sentence. So that will be Nasab. And similarly, it could be Hazal Waladi, and that will be Jar. So here, Haza will be considered to be in Jar. So that's how we make out uh, the Arab of Haza, which is Mabni. We can complete this sentence. We can say Hazal Waladu Hasanun. Hasanun. This boy, which is Isam Ishara and plus Musharun Ile, Musharun Ile, here they combine to make Muktada, and Hasanun being indefinite is our Khabar, and Muktada and Khabar combine to make Jumla Ismiya Khabariya. So now we can say Hazal should be Waladu. Khab Muktada is always in Rafa. So Hazal Waladu Hasanun. This boy is good. The translation of Hasanun could be good. We can also say beautiful. And we can also say smart. So just like in, in, any, in any other language, for example, English or Urdu or French, some words can have more than one meaning. So Hasanun can have all these three meanings and it will depend on the context, what translation we do. So if the discussion is whether the boy is good or bad, we will say the boy is good, which means not bad. If the discussion is whether the boy is beautiful or ugly, we will say the boy is beautiful, not ugly. That's what we are basically saying. And if our discussion is, is the boy smart or dull? So we are saying the boy is smart or clever, which means not dull. Similarly, Quran translations sometimes vary from person to person, depending on who is the scholar and in what context they are doing the translations. All the translations are correct, but it depends really on the context and how the words are used and what is their meaning considered to be in a particular translation. Right, so Hazal Waladu Hasanun. So that's one point of Al being on Musharun Alayh. The second point is, if I say this pen is beautiful, well, it's probably not beautiful, but let's, that's not the point. Um, for argument's sake, I'll say this pen is beautiful. I can also say this is beautiful. So, which basically means when I say this is beautiful, you know what I'm talking about because this is what I'm pointing to. So, this pen is beautiful. We have got Ishara and Musharan Allah there, this pen. And when I say this is beautiful, then we do not have Musharan Allah there. Musharan Allah has been dropped, or we can say Musharan Allah is Mahzuf. So let us translate this. This pen is beautiful. Hazal Kalamu, this pen. Azal Kalamu, you can say Jamilun. Is beautiful. Or we can say Haza Jamilun.
in this case here, this Masharan ala is ma'zuf. It has been dropped. Because when we say haza jamilun, jamilun is indefinite, so it cannot be Masharan ala. Indefinite means it doesn't have um, al on it. So this cannot be Masharan ala. But in this case, then this al kalamu, which is Masharan ala, is considered to be ma'zuf or dropped. And in Quran Park, there are many examples when different words are dropped but considered to be there. This is this could be one of those constructions. So before we look at further examples, let us go through that chart, which is very important. Now we have looked at Haza. Haza is, these are called Asma'ul Isharati. Ism is singular and Asma is plural. Asma'ul Isharati. On the horizontal plane we have Wahid, Tasniya and Jama. On the vertical plane we have um, Muzakkar and Monas for both. So if we look at Haza, that's Wahid Muzakkar and Hazehi is Wahid Mu'annis for saying this. These are demonstrative pronouns to point to things which are near to us. Kareeb means close by or near to us. So Asma'ul Isharati Lil Kareeb. So these six are demonstrative pronouns to point at something which is close to us, near to us. So haza, hazehi. Haza is mabni, haza, haza, haza. Hazehi is similarly mabni, hazehi, hazehi, hazehi in three Arabic states. Then we have tasniya, which is hazani. And these two, and hazani, these two feminine. And our jama is haulai for both muzakkar and monis. Jama is the same. The plural is the same. Haulai. Now looking at this, um, this is mabni. This is mabni, and haulai is also mabni. Haulai, haulai, haulai. But tasniya is mu'rib. So for rafa, we will say hazani. For Nasab and Jar, we will say Hazaini. So Hazani, Hazaini, Hazaini. Similarly, Hatani, Hataini, Hataini. So Hatani and Rafa, Hataini and Nasab, and then Hataini and Jar. So these are demonstrative pronouns of things which are close to us. These are demonstrative pronouns of distance. So asma'ul isharati lil ba'id. Ba'id means something which is at a distance, away from us. And these are zalika for wahid and muzakkar and tilka for mu'annis. And similarly, both of these are mabni. For tasniya, we have zanika and tanika for mu'annis. And for plural, we have ulaika. It's important to pronounce this ulaika, not ulaika, because wa is silent here. It's written, but it's silent. There is a reason for that. We can't go into that today. So ulaika, not ulaika, ulaika. So zalika, tilka, and ulaika, they are mabni. But again, tasniya here, they are mu'rab. And uh, in rafa, we will say zanika. And in uh, Nasr and Jar, we are going to say Zainika. So Zanika, Zainika, Zainika. Similarly, Tanika, Tainika, Tainika. So it's really all to do with memorizing. There is no shortcut to that. Either we make use of these pronouns on a day-to-day -day basis and we become familiar with them. Alternatively, we we'll just have to memorize them. The way we memorize the chart of uh, personal pronouns. So just keep that in mind. 
and that's how it goes let's look at some more examples we say we want to say that book that book so book is kitabun kitabun and we're going to put al on it it will come al kitabu al kitabu and for that book is a muzakkar kitab is muzakkar so we will have to find muzakkar of distance which is zalika so we're gonna prefix this with zalika za lika so that will become zalikal kitabu will this is hamzatul wasl so it becomes zalikal kitabu that book now this is uh, at the beginning of uh, surah bakra we all know that alif lam mim zalikal kitabu so you must be wondering then because all the translations say this book la fihi there is no doubt in it but here we are saying that book zalika so why is that there is a very good reason for that so zalikal kitabu because the book is on our hand and we are saying that book okay so the construction is not hazal kitabu it's zalikal kitabu and a couple of points to note about that um first let let us look at kitab kitab in um, classical arabic does not really mean book and also uh, we are calling this kitab but when quran was revealed it was not really revealed as a book um it was revealed bit by bit uh, over a long period of time so kitab in classical in modern standard arabic when we say kitab we translate that as a book but in classical arabic kitab is not a book it is actually is a master so we have fail which is a word which is kataba to the he wrote kataba he wrote which is madi and mudare is yaktubu you know a little bit about fail kataba yaktubu and then it's um master is kitabatun and there's another master for this which is kitabun many verbs are associated with more than one masdar and this is one of the examples so kitabun being masdar and we know masdar is an abstract concept which basically means the action of writing okay so kitab in classical arabic is then translated variously as um, writing depending on the context it could be writing a writing a degree we can say a prescription uh, we can say a judgment and we can say a record are a register so those are the meanings of kitab in classical arabic we can say scripture so it's a writing it's a decree it could be translated as prescription judgment scripture record register 
For example, uh, we are very familiar with the ayah Kotiba alaykum siyam. Kotiba from the same kataba here. Kotiba alaykum siyam. So, Kotiba alaykum siyam. which is translated as fasting has been prescribed for you not really written for you but prescribed for you it's kind of prescription isn't it so kitab could easily be translated as prescription there's another ayah which is um, ayah of um, surah Toba, ayah number 36 it says, Inna iddata shahuri in the lahi isna ashra shahran fi kitabillahi. Indeed, the number of months with Allah is 12 lunar months. And fi kitabillahi here does not mean in the book of Allah, we can say in the register of Allah or in the record of Allah. So it is kind of uh, decreeing here that uh, there are 12 months Allah decided to have 12 months rather than 13 months or 14 months for example so it's a decreeing 12 months so so again kitab fi kitab illahi here does not mean in the book of Allah in the record of Allah um, in the register of Allah so that that kind of meaning and uh, our phrase is Zalik al Kitabu. Zalik al Kitabu. So Kitab has indefinite form will be Kitabun. This Al Kitabu. And this Al of definiteness has a number of meaning in Arabic. Um, one of its meaning is to single out something to be the highest as well as perfection kind of thing. And that is the meaning of Al here in Al Kitab. It obviously means a scripture with the decrees from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has commands, prohibitions, etc. It actually does not mean a book. So the question is why the demonstrative pronoun of distance has been used here, Zalik al Kitabu rather than Hazal Kitabu. Scholars has given different explanations. Two of them, uh, I did like them, and uh, they are supported um, by Quran. For example, we have a couple of ayah from Surah al buruj which is uh, Surah 85, and these ayah are 21 and 22. So the first one is Bal Hova. Quranun Majidun Quranun Majidun That's how it's written Quran Majid. That's ayah number 21 Quranun Majidun Fi lohim mahfuzin Lohim Mahfu Sin twenty two. So what we are saying is well what Quran says here is but this is an honored Quran inscribed in a preserved slate or tablet so where is Quran Quran is in law law mahfuz 
which is higher up at a distance and that shows the distance so that's where Quran is we have a copy of that exact copy but we do not have the original which is fi lohin mahfuzin in a preserved slate or tablet so that really shows us the distance clearly it is higher up there and hence zalika um, there is another explanation given by scholars and that is to do with la rayba fihi la rayba fihi there is absolutely no doubt in it whatsoever and that comes from this the way the raib is written here so la rayba fihi um okay quran in quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is no doubt in it but what if somebody has doubt in it for example then we have another ayah in ruku number three of surah bakra not very far from this um i think it's ayah number 23 and it says وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأَتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّسْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهُدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَالِكِينَ There is no doubt in it, but if you have a doubt what we have sent upon our servant, then produce a surah like this thereof and call upon your witnesses other than Allah if you should be truthful. And the next eye actually is a challenge is really a huge challenge for illam tafalu and if you're not able to do so walam tafalu and you will never be able to do so so be prepared for the fire um biggest challenge and that challenge has not been met so far so this basically points out that um, all the writings Quran is kind of because no one has been able to produce such a writing even one surah and the smallest surah is only three ayahs surah Qasr, surah Nasr and surah Asr so no one has been able to bring anything close to the like of this and this basically means the Quran is here and all the other writings they're somewhere here so there is a distance it shows the high rank of Quran and because of this high rank of Quran demonstrated pronoun of distance has been used scholars also say that uh, this ranking uh, our greatness is uh, our distance could be horizontal or vertical when it's vertical it shows the high rank of something or someone etc so that's another way of looking at it that anything which has got high rank demonstrative pronoun of distance has been used generally in Arabic especially in good Arabic prose or in poetry as well so Quran is there and everything else is here so hence Zalikal Kitabu. I hope that has made sense. That wasn't all to do with the grammar, but this was really, really important. So I thought I should uh, spend a little bit of time on it. Right. Now let us look at some other examples. If we want to say these two boys, these boys how do we translate that um, these means we'll have to go there in the chart these the nearby these two hazan so we can use that here hazani let's go first to boys 
Waladun and Tasnia will be Waladani Waladani and we have to put Al on it will become Al Waladani and then we bring from here Hazani prefix this with Hazani Hazani. This comes of Talwasal, this becomes Hazanil Waladani. These two boys. That will be our Rafa construction. So Waladani in Rafa, in Nasib and Jar will be Waladaini. So that will become Al Waladaini. And this will become Hazaini to go with that. Hazainil ha Waladaini. Translation means the same, these two boys. And Jar will also be Hazainil Waladaini. Now, if we want to say for example, we want to say this girl. So girl is uh, Bintun Add Al on it will become Al Bintu Al Bintu and because this is feminine, singular, we have to bring for this will be ha zehi. So we'll prefix this with ha zehi, like that. And because we have, this is Hamzat al again, so we'll have to combine this ha zehi with bintu. And this standing kasra becomes normal kasra when it is combined with a word after so it will become haze hill bintu this girl and if we want to say that girl we will just say tilka tilka Bintu. That girl. Okay, now we want to say let's make this make a plural construction. We'll say these boys. That's now plural. These boys. So, Waladun is singular and its plural is Auladun. And we have to all add Al on it, it will become Al Auladu. Al Auladu, the mean will go. Al Auladu. So, this is Jama Mukassar of this Waladun. And we have to prefix that with haulai. Haulai. Although this has kasra here, but that because this is mabni, so that doesn't really mean anything. This is mabni, and this irab of this will not be jar here. We, we shouldn't get confused with this kasra. We have to find out the era from here. So this is in Rafa, so that is also in state of Rafa. So haula il auladu. So we remove, combine these two. Haula il auladu. These boys. There is an important point here which um, I'm going to make. That when 
a noun is Jama Mukassar of Muzakkar. Waladun is Muzakkar, and this is Jama Mukassar of this Muzakkar. It is permissible to bring Isma Ishara as singular feminine. So we can write here, this is correct anyway according to the rules, but we can also say Hazi Hill oneness, Hazi Hill Auladu, these boys. These boys. This is correct, and this is correct anyway because this is according to the rules. But if you want to have a high quality, a refined prose, normally that construction will be used, and in poetry as well, for example. So, these boys is the same thing. Okay. Um, Similarly, look, let us look at another construction. Um, Rasulun is messenger. It's a singular. Rasulun. Rasulun, Rasul are messenger. And its plural is Rosulun. Rosulu. Rosulun here without al. Rasulun, Rasulun. So this is Jama Mukassar of plural. So if we want to say those messengers, those messengers, we can say Messengers add al here, ar rusulu to make it musharun ala ar rusulu, and we can say ulai kar rusulu. So those messengers, because this is Jama Mukassar of um, Muzakkar, so we are also permitted to say and write Til Kar Rasulu, bring feminine singular demonstrative pronouns Til So, para 3 of um, Quran, which is continuation of Surah Baqarah, we have at the beginning there, Tilkar Rusulu Faddalna Ba'aduhum Ala Ba'adin. These are the Rasul's messengers. We have exalted some above others. So, Tilka has been used. Um, why then again demonstrate a pronoun of distance? Because we're not really saying Zali Kar Rusulu, because the translation is these messengers. We actually appear to be saying those messengers, Tilka Raden Zali Kar Rusulu. So Tilka Rusulu, because these messengers they've got high rank, and because of their high rank demonstrative pronoun of distance has been used. So there are two points here. One, the use of tilka as a singular feminine and also this being the, the demonstrative pronoun of distance. Similarly, we have ayat tilka hududullahi fala ta'taduha. These are the limits set by Allah. Do not transgress them. So tilka hududullahi, similar to this, tilka, I could write down here, tilka 
दिल का हदुन इज सिंगुलर एंड हदूदन इज प्लूरल सो दिस इज जमा मुकसर हेयर सो सो तिल का हदूदुल्लाह This is mudaf. It's not going to take the mean. Allah's limits, Allah's bounds, tilka. These, but because of the rank, tilka, demonstrative pronoun of distance has been used here as well. Tilka hududullahi. This phenomena of uh, using the demonstrative pronouns of distance uh, to highlight. the high rank of something or someone has been also made prominent in uh, surah yusuf um when uh, um the story became kind of common knowledge among um, elite women in the town the story of uh, the wife of uh, al aziz al misr um she became aware of the malicious talk going on and she invited them and uh, prepared a banquet for them and gave them the usual cutlery etc etc and when they were engaged in cutting the food stuff etc um she asked joseph to come in and there it says falamma i'm not going to write here falamma ra'aynahu when they saw him akbarnahu so they were amazed um they were overwhelmed uh, by the appearance and then i is waqatna adiyahunna and they ended up cutting their hands because they were already using the cutlery waqulna and they exclaimed and they said hasha lillahi good lord ma haza basharun that's what the word is ma haza basharun ma haza basharun this is not a human being in haza illa malakun kareemun he is but a noble angel and then um, the wife of al aziz al misr said qalat she said fazali kunna qalat faza kind of fazali kunna allazi lum tunnani fihi she said qalat well this is he about whom you blamed me so those women used haza basharun demonstrative pronoun of nearness because they were not aware of the high rank of yusuf but this woman she was aware of the high rank of yusuf she used she used zalika here kind of like this zalika fazalikun allazi lum tunnani fihi so there is a contrast here those who didn't know the high rank of yusuf they used haza but the the woman who knew his high rank she used zalika so it's quite good uh, example here because there is a comparison between the two kind of school of thought now we look at 
some other examples from Quran. I have written them here. وَيَكُولُونَ مَتَا هَذَا الْوَادُ إِن كُنْتَمْ وَيَكُولُونَ They ask When will this promise be fulfilled? هَذَا الْوَادُ This promise إِن كُنْتَمْ If what you say is true. This is um, Surah Mulk, Ayah number 25. So, Hazal Wadu, we can see here, this is Murakkab Ishari, and it is in Rafa construction here. Hazal Wadu, this, here we go. Hazal Wadu, not Wadu. Hazal Wadu is in Rafa construction here, because Al Wadu is in Rafa. The next ayah, Lo Anzalna Hazal Qur'ana Ala Jabalin, if we have sent down this Quran on a mountain. Ra'aytahu khashiyan mutasaddian min khashiyatillah. You would have seen it humble itself and split asunder from the fear of Allah. So that's Surah Hashir, Ayah number 21. Law anzalna. If we have sent it down, sent down what? Quran. So what is being sent down is the action of the is the object of the verb, object of the action of the verb. So that's why it is in nasib here. We know object in a sentence is always in nasib. Our first example was Nasara Hamidun Zaidan. Hamid helped Zaid. So Zaid there was in nasib. So this construction is in nasib. Surah Quraysh, Le ilafi Quraysh and ilafi him, Rehlata Shita, Eva Swai, Falya was safe, Falya Abudu, Bahaz al Baiti. So they should worship the Rabb of this house, the Lord of this house. So they should worship, worship who? Rabb. So Rabb is in Nasib here. And because this is Mudaf, and this construction Hazal Bayti is Mudafira, which is always in Jar. So Hazal Bayti here is in construction of Jar. It's a Jar construction. Um, if we say Rabba Haza, Rab of Haza, so Haza will be considered to be Mudafila anyway, and it will be considered to be Fi Mahalli Jarin. But then Al Bayti tells us that Haza here is in Jar. Ajastu an Akuna Misla Hazal Gurabi, Surah Maida, ayah number 31. And this ayah is about when um, um, the first two sons of um, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. So Cain killed Abel. And um, then he did not know what to do with um, the corp of his uh, brother. So, So Allah sent a raven. And then Cain says, Cain was the older brother, Cain says that, Kala ya wailati. Alas, he kind of cried, he shouted, or he cried, Ajastu an akuna misla hazal gurabi. I failed even to be like this raven. So the raven started kind of um, 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 raven really demonstrated to him that how to bury uh, his brother. The next is uh, Surah Yusuf again. Kala ya bushra haza gulaman. And he said, Good news. Um, this is a boy. This is, I found a young boy. Haza gulaman. 
So the difference here is that uh, from these constructions, Hazal Baiti, Haza Gulaman, there is no Misharun Allah here, and this is Jumla Ismiya. This is Muktada, and that is Khabar. So we can say Musharun Allah is dropped here or Mahzur. So Haza Gulaman, I have found a boy. Kala Haza Yoman Asiban, that's Surah Hud, ayah number 77. And that is about when um, Allah sent uh, those messengers to Lut and he found himself to be helpless to protect them. And he said, Kala, he said, Haza Yoman Asiban. This is a woeful day. This is a critical day. So Haza because it's followed by Yomun, so this is not Musharan Ilah because it doesn't have Al on it. Musharan Ilah we can say is Mahzuf here. Haza is Muktada, Yomun is Khabar, and Yomun is actually Masuf, and that is the Sifa. So this is Masuf and Sifa construction, and that Murakkab Tosifi is Khabar here of Haza, of Muktada. So few examples from Quran to highlight these points because end of the day our focus is Quran. Subhanakallah mawabihim deka ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.